In this video, I'm going to talk about the early GG and his transformation to the shit taking jockstrap wearing GG that he became at the end. I was there to see the transformation, the start of it. I met Gigi in 1982. When I met him, he was married, he had a job, had a nice apartment. I went to his apartment, met his wife. She was very nice. Once in a while, we'd take her out. We'd go out bar hopping or host some shows. I had nothing but good things to say about her. But in, I believe it was 1983, they moved up to Littleton, New Hampshire. And I believe it was because she got a new job up there. I know Gigi didn't want to go, but they went up there. Within like three months, he came back down to Manchester by himself. They separated. He started living in the shitty boarding house room down on Hanover Street. In his boarding house room, he had nothing but a piss stained mattress on the floor, kitchen table, and a few chairs. I mean, it was a shithole. He was living like an animal. This is where it all started. He was hanging out with these motley crew looking idiots. And if you watch the video, Live Fast, Die Fast, you can see some of these idiots in the video. That video is hilarious. It's so bad that it's good. You get a chance, watch it. It's on YouTube. But this is where he started getting the tats. In that video, actually, he doesn't even have any tats. Right before he just started getting the tats. But this is where he started doing drugs and doing a lot of drinking. It was because of these Motley Crue guys. And there was a ring that it was a girl, I remember. She had the big fucking metal hair, and that's the one. He was hanging out with her, and that's when he started doing the drugs. The jabbers weren't at the drugs, it wasn't us. That's where it all started. And I'll tell you what, within, I think, 1985, he took his first shit on the stage. And believe me, back when I was in the jabbers, Gigi would always say, Oh, I'm going to make you guys famous. And the way you're going to make us famous is if you become famous. That was his goal in his life become famous and he realized the more outrageous he became the more press coverage he'd get. Just ask yourself, he didn't start shitting on the stage, cutting himself up, beating up the audience, you know, slamming the mic into his mouth and breaking his teeth. You think he'd be on those lame talk shows with Jane Watney and Geraldo Rivera and he was supposed to be on Morton Downey Jr.'s show? He would have never been on those shows. I watched some of those interviews when he was on those shows, I laughed. He's got the Nazi helmet, he's got the cane, he's got like the SS leather long coat. It's like saying stuff like, you know, I, I have sex with boys and girls. That's all bullshit. He wasn't insane at all. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was getting as more outrageous as he could so he could get more press because his whole life was about getting famous. That's what he wanted in his life. When people say, oh, he was crazy, he was insane, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. There's people, even later on, I read posts where they met him back in the, you know, 90s, right before he died or whatever, 90, 91, 92. Oh, he was such a nice guy. When I met him, we talked and blah, blah. He smelled like shit, I'm sure, but he wasn't outrageous. He wasn't, he wasn't some lunatic like you think he was. It was all calculating. And it all started when he separated from his wife. That's when, when he didn't have any responsibility to her anymore. That's when his persona basically took over. Before it was Gigi Allen on stage, and then it was Kevin Allen, the husband, off the stage. And he didn't know how, he didn't have to do that anymore. Every day, more and more, he became Gigi Allen 24 seven, but he wasn't as bad as everybody thought he was. You could talk to him and all that. He was he was cool, but he wasn't insane. That was all bullshit. It's all a, all an act.